Well, hello all my siren beauties and welcome to another video so this is part two of my rhinestones video where we're going to get into designs so i'm just showing you what you'll need you'll need rhinestone glue this is another rhinestone glue that i'll be using um somewhere up on the screen i'll put the tag for the first part of the video and i should tell you why i choose these two products you'll need a little brush this will be used for putting on caviar beads, also the wax pencil. I go into more details again in part one. It's just a rundown and then a little needle tool. Next up are crystals. So we're gonna be using clear crystals. I'm keeping it very simple as well as AB crystals. These are two kinds that I think a lot of you will end up having and these are also two kinds that I recommend starting out with. If you are a little more experienced, we have some shapes. I will be doing a couple of shape designs. So we have the arrow in a couple of sizes as well as I believe this is called the diamond in a few sizes. So we're gonna start with a nail that has two coats of polish as well as base gel on top. Wipe it with an alcohol and then you're gonna buff it out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and press that notification bell for more content. It works out better to do it on a buffed nail. That is my, ins that's my TikTok, excuse me. And then coming up should be my Instagram. There you go. I will be rebuilding my social medias. So you're gonna wipe it down with alcohol it just works out better to have a matte nail for rhinestone placement. Oh, through my experience, if you're doing something really quick, maybe not. If you're doing this like in a salon and you're doing a quick rhinestone placement, then maybe not do it. But this is how they all look buffed out. Let's start with the first design and it is fairly simple and it is just going to be a row of crystals. Now, when you're doing this, it could be one crystal, it could be two, it could be three, it could be four, as many as you like, and we're gonna go from biggest size to the smallest. You're going to pick the rhinestones according to the nail size itself. So I have a longer, bigger nail, this is a size two, so I'm going to choose crystals accordingly. Now, when you're putting it on, you're just gonna use a little bit of the rhinestone glue, place it down. Small amounts are always best. You wanna try and avoid having excess outside seepage because it can sometimes be difficult to clean up. And then she's gonna, I'm gonna put them on. There we go. I did fast forward this a little bit, but I did want to give you as much of real time as possible. So you're just gonna lay them down and situate them. The final part to this design is placing caviar beads. Think of caviar beads as like the prongs to the rhinestone design. So if you have a ring and the prongs hold the gem, that is kind of what the, the caviar beads are. I just like that look. You do not have to do this. These are all changeable to whatever your taste is. I'm just showing you probably the more dramatic version of these, but you could always tame them down however you see fit. So we're just going to put them on and that's how it looks finally. All of them are cured for 60 seconds. So now we're on to the second design and I thought I had my camera on, but as you can see, it starts off with this necklace. So you have the bigger one in the middle and then you do the sides. So for this one, I actually did want to add a shape. So we're getting a little bit more advanced. Again, you could leave it at just that first part with the necklace. I have a longer nail. So I wanna add in a little bit more. So I just rotated the shape of the gem. And then the, all this is right here is just you mapping out your design, what you think you want it to be once you put it on the nail. Things may change, see that's being fussy, that little gem. 
things may change when you actually get it on the nail so map it out and then we're gonna put it on so i'm using the brush and we're going to use very little amounts you don't want to glob it on my best advice is to put some glue on a palette and then dip into that and we're just going to take it section by section so we're going to do the necklace part first So the necklace part has been set. You can do this in even smaller sections if you are uncomfortable. So now we're gonna put on the gem. Please take it step by step. If you can't do the whole thing because you think it's gonna move, do one side, cure it for 60 seconds, do the other side, cure it. Take as many steps as you need to get everything lined up. And this is the final look once you add in the caviar beads. On to design three. So design three, I wanted it to be more shape focus. Unfortunately on this day, I guess I just wasn't feeling anything that I was doing when it came to this design. So I ended up scrapping it and going for something a lot simpler. I did want this to be a beginner friendly video. If you want, we can turn this into a series where I just map out several different rhinestone placements and it can be a one-stop shop for you for inspiration. Another great place to find inspiration for a rhinestone placement is Pinterest. Uh, what else? So here you're going to see me do this design and then scrap it and go for something a lot simpler. Here's that final design coming up. Again, like I said, a lot simpler just for this video this time around. And now we're gonna put it on the nail. So here, same thing again. We started putting a little bit of gel and then I started to place the crystals on. What you are going to see is that I didn't want the design to start all the way at the top. I wanted to start the design more towards the middle of the nail and it's relatively easy to do so. You just move it around on the go. And here is the design. I This one, I decided not to use caviar beads. For the last design, we are doing probably my most popular one that I use a lot. And this is kind of that swirl design. If you have been following my channel for a long time, you know I tend to do this design a lot on the nails. So pretty much how it goes is you have one big focus crystal, then you put two at the top two at the bottom kind of on a slight angle and then you're just going to create tails so to speak at both the top and the bottom of that little cluster bundle that you made that's kind of the best way i can explain it right now you could rewind and look at the video and then we're going to put it on the nail for this definitely do it in sections so i put the big one at the bottom and then we're going to put those other four crystals around it and then i'm possibly going to cure that
So while it's curing, here are some other examples of the swirl. This one is from my Cinderella glow in the dark. This one was a smoked purple one that I did. You can see the same bit of formation. And then again, here is that same concept, but with a charm from my holiday. So continuing on, now we're going to do the bottom. So we're just going to add a little bit more glue. I did switch over to the needle. Sometimes that happens. And then you're just gonna put on the rest of the crystals for the tail and the upper. Last part here, we just fast forwarded. I'm adding in the caviar beads, especially with this design. It, I think it looks really pretty and helps put everything together. So we're just gonna fill those bad boys in, cure it for 60 seconds. And then all of them got a top coat, a matte top coat finish. Rhinestones, they pop more when they are matte finished nails. You do not have to do this but then we will have the final result. And here are all four designs together. I hope you enjoyed watching and learned something. Let me know what you would like to know next about rhinestones. And until next time, bye.